name is Paula Jo Henry. So we have two operations of Crepes Paulette. One is a food truck and one is a storefront, which is a more recent venue. We sell mainly crepes. Uh, we focus on that. We serve both a savory crepe and a sweet crepe. Uh, so two different batters. Um, and then we, at the storefront, we're adding a few other things little by little. We've got uh, soups. Um, we're going to put some salads in. We're doing a crepe cake, which is uh, cold crepes with mousse in between them. We've also added a very short list of beer, wine, and cider. I would say right now, the chopper is a favorite. It's a chicken, sharp cheddar, and a cabbage and barbecue mayo sauce that we use, we call it Arkansas. And it's just, it's just a delicious combination. And we do a, ver a vegetarian version of that too, with nuts instead of chicken, and it's just delicious. So I, it's kind of caught on unexpectedly, and we've left it on the menu, and it's definitely a favorite. I think the biggest thing is the, the buckwheat crepe, which to me is the star of the whole show. It's something that's really unusual around here. It's gluten-free, it's dairy-free, it's um, uh, egg-free, uh, which sounds like there's just no way you could make a, <laughs> a very thin thing out of that, and it just works. Uh, and it's a very traditional recipe. It's, it, it was uh, poor man's food in France when they couldn't afford the beautiful white refined flour. Uh, the farmers would grow buckwheat because it was very inhospitable, it was very wet and rocky land, and um, buckwheat grows almost anywhere. And so this was their poor man's food, and now it's funny how, like so many other things, it's sort of come full circle and it's boutique again. <laughs> but it's a very traditional recipe. My husband and I had just moved back from France um, with our two small children, and we're looking for something to do, and we sort of saw the growth of the area coming with Crystal Bridges, not that it wasn't already growing with, with the, other, the other things, but there was a cultural element that hadn't been there before that was coming in. We saw that there was going to be a need for different cuisines, different options for people that were coming to see the museum and the other things that Northwest Arkansas offers. And uh, we decided that that might be a good niche for us. My husband's French, uh, and he's actually from a part of France, Brittany, that is um, the home of our buckwheat the, the type of um, crepe that we use for our savory crepes, which is a buckwheat galette. And uh, so we, we initially fished around with opening a restaurant in the area somewhere and realized that maybe that was a bit too much for us to bite off straight off the bat. So we scaled back and started with a food truck. And it, it's been great because it's really allowed us to, to define the concept and figure out some directions that work and some directions that don't. And, and then we were able to notice the need for growing and, and, and add another location. Learning how to make crepes was trial and error. <laughs> Fred had some experience with it as a kid, but he would eat crepes that other people made, not ones that he made himself. Because in, in France you can go to any bakery and buy a stack of sweet crepes just to take home and roll with, with jam or whatever for breakfast. But it's not very hard, even though it looks difficult, it's not very hard to learn how to do that. Um, what took more time was understanding how we were going to serve them in a handheld format, which all of our crepes are handheld. Obviously, we'll give you a plate if you want one, but they're sort of designed to just be eaten like a burger. And uh, so there are a lot of restrictions, and that's what I would say was more of the teaching part, is what, what sort of things can you apply, what sort of things don't run all over you uh, at the bottom, and how to make strong flavors in a crepe, because it almost needs that, this buckwheat crepes needs some, some bright flavors inside of it to sort of stand up to the, the crepe itself. So that was more the teaching part, is how are we going to make this into our handheld sort of Americanized version while still retaining the, the authenticity of the crepes themselves. So here at the storefront, we have begun serving our crepes at the table with these cups that have our name on it and everything like that. And a lot of them we're leaving, which is you know not so terrible because we get large amounts of them, but people were walking out of them like they might from a chain restaurant that offered a cup like that. So we didn't want to stop people from doing that, but we wanted to make it uh, feasible for us to continue. And so we've started making this a, a donation, a honor system donation. And if you want to take a cup, we just ask that you give a dollar or whatever amount you want to give in a bucket by the door, and it will go to the nonprofit that we have listed on the sign above it. And so it's a way for us to be, and then we'll just give 100%. We don't, we don't take anything out of it. We, whatever is in the bucket, we give. And it surprisingly has taken off. Um, the, the first one we did for a couple of weeks, we got 60 bucks. Uh, went to the Crystal Creek Rescue and 
I was just the woman who came in and collected it today, and she told me that's like taking care of 12 cats. So that's that's really cool. It's a small amount, but it's a nice little way to to get back.